Okay, so in this video, we're going to talk about angles and standard position. Okay, we're going to, we learned about radians and degrees and how to convert from one to the other um, in the previous set of notes. Okay, but now we're going to talk about angles and we're going to be in the coordinate plane in standard position. So let's define a few things first. Okay, so angles are in standard position if they're in the coordinate plane and their initial side, which we're about to define, is on the positive x-axis. Okay, the endpoints at the origin and the initial side extends to the right on the x-axis, okay? So the initial side in standard position, the initial side is what we just said, okay? It's a ray with an endpoint at the origin extending along the positive x-axis, all right? So that's the first ray that's gonna form uh, one of these angles. The second ray is called the terminal side, okay? So in standard position, the terminal side of an angle is a second ray with an endpoint at the origin just like the initial side, that's what's going to create the angle. And it can extend anywhere within the coordinate plane. Okay? Now, <clears throat> we have positive angles. Okay? When we're in standard position, the positive angle rotates from the initial side, which is on the x-axis, to the terminal side in, in what we say a counterclockwise fashion. Okay? So if you look at this, the, you know, assume O here is the origin and X here is, you know, along the x-axis. So that's the initial side. If we move counterclockwise, that's going to make it a positive angle, okay? So this would be the terminal side here, uh, ray OP, okay? Negative angles, conversely, the initial side's still going to be the x-axis, but instead of going counterclockwise, we're going to go in a clockwise fashion uh, to the terminal side, okay? So now we're going to look at some angles. We're going to graph some angles in standard position, uh, specifically angles that are in degree measure, like these and angles that are in radian measure like these. So let's move on to the graph. Okay, so as you can see here, we've got, uh, we're in degree form right now. We'll move into radian form in just a little bit, okay? Um, but we've got all the multiples of 30 and 45, okay, those special angles. Remember, when we were going over special right triangles, we had 30, 60, 90 special right triangles, and we had 45, 45, 90 special right triangles. So we're gonna use all those multiples um, in this circle, okay? Down the line, we're going to learn about something called the unit circle, and uh, you're going to get pretty comfortable with seeing this, okay? So first, you can already see I've got the initial side on the x-axis, okay? Endpoint at the origin extending to the right on the x-axis. Now, if we want to draw a 30-degree angle, okay, we're going to start our terminal side here, and we're going to draw that angle. Now, it's important to label the directionality of the angle here. This is a positive 30 degrees, so we're going counterclockwise from the initial side to the terminal side, okay? So that's a 30 degree angle in standard position, okay? So let's get rid of those last two things. Okay. Now we wanna draw a 180 degree angle. So we've got our initial side. 180 degrees means we're gonna do half of a revolution so there's gonna be my terminal side. Again, it's important to note the direction of the angle. We're going counterclockwise, that makes it a positive 180 degree angle, okay? So that's how you would draw a 180 degree angle in standard form, okay? And now let's look at 225. So 225, we know 180 is a half of a revolution. Then we've got 45 more degrees to go here. So to draw a 225 degree angle, Again, I have to tell the direction of the angle. So we're going counterclockwise. So this is what a 225 degree angle looks like in standard form, okay? Now, let's say we wanted to graph a couple negative angles. Let's say I wanted to graph an angle of negative 30 instead of positive 30. So we're going clockwise this time, okay? So that angle would be, excuse me, would be right there, okay? And because it's a negative 30, I'm going to go clockwise, okay? Let's do, let's say a negative 135, for example, okay? So negative 135, well, from here to here is going to be 90 degrees. And then I've got another 45 degrees to go. So negative 135 would fall right there, okay? And we're going clockwise because it's negative, all right? So that's how you graph angles in standard position in degree form, okay? Now we're gonna go over some that are in radiant form. So now we've got a circle that has the, 
those special angles, but in radian form here, okay? So again, we just recently went over how to convert from radians to degrees. But if you convert pi over 6 radians into degrees, this would be 30 degrees, okay? Pi over 4 would be 45 degrees. Pi over 3 would be 60. Pi over 2 would be 90, and so on, okay? So notice the circle is exactly the same form as the one we just went over in degree form, okay? But now we're going to be dealing with angles in terms of radian measure, okay? So let's draw the angle pi over 3 in standard position. So pi over 3 is going to be right here. So I've got my angle. That's going to be my terminal side. It's a positive pi over 3. So I'm going in a counterclockwise fashion. So that's the angle pi over 3 in standard position. Okay, let's move on to the next one. We've got 5 pi over 6. Okay, well, think about this fraction here. 5 over 6 is a little less than 1. Okay, and we know half a revolution is 1 pi. So we know we're going to be just short of pi. All right, so 5 pi over 6, this is going to be that point. So our terminal side is going to be there. It's a positive 5 pi over 6. So I'm going in a counterclockwise fashion. Okay, so that's the angle 5 pi over 6. And finally, we've got 3 pi over 2. Well, 3 pi over 2 is like 1 and a half pi. Well, uh, half a revolution is 1 pi. A full revolution, we said, was 2 pi. So it's kind of like there's a 2 pi here. Okay? So 1 and a half pi would be halfway between those two. So my terminal side's going to be here. We're going in a positive uh, direction. So that means counterclockwise. So this is what the, gra the angle 3 pi over 2 would look like in standard form. Okay? Now let's look at a few negative ones. All right, okay, um, let's say we want to go negative 3 pi over 4, okay? Well, positive 3 pi over 4 would be here, so, you know, if we were going that far around, we're going halfway between, you know, pi over 2 and 1 pi. Well, negative 3 pi over 4 would be the same down here in quadrant 3, okay? It would be halfway between pi and 3 pi over 2. So my terminal side for negative 3 pi over 4 would be there, okay? So this would be negative three pi over four, okay? So that's how you graph angles in standard position in degree form and in radian form.